Benji here. I hope you're doing great. We're going to do something totally different today. We're going to talk about how or why should you start a side hustle. There's going to be shadows. We're turning. We're going down the highway. A lot of this, I'm going to turn the camera around, but I'm here right now with my son, AJ. Say hi, AJ. Hey, everybody. AJ's mic'd up as well. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be live and I'm going to get AJ's mic'd up as well. We've got to pause that. <laughs> yeah, we got to, uh, or you know what? I, got, I guess I got to play it and then turn it down. The, the questions are gonna come in a little delayed. I'm gonna talk about my side hustle experience. My son's gonna be able to chime in. And then we're just gonna have you guys looking at the road so it gives you something better to look at than this uh, crazy mug. So here we go. And uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna start just talking about some of my quests. Because I think it's so very valuable that Americans, uh, actually people all around the world start side hustles, start businesses. First off, the reason why is because it gives you an unbelievable sense of accomplishment. Most people, they care more about how they're gonna fail or why they fail rather than just trying. And I think it's very important that people understand that once you get that little win, and that's where it should start, little wins. You start small goals and you start setting bigger goals and bigger goals. But as you get a win, you've accomplished something. You get another win, you've accomplished something. You now turn your pessimism or your ideas of how things should turn out into a confidence that is unlike anything that, that really it's, it's very hard for me to explain unless you've been through it. Type one, if you are one of those people that understand how important it is to go from win to win to win, and then that confidence that builds that a lot of people don't understand. When you get to the point where you've done so many different things in life, and, and I, I had somebody email me the other day with all these side hustles she had done. She was so frustrated because none of them had went the way she wanted them to. I have to say, the first thing I think of is think of all the things that you've done and you've tried in your life that have given you skills and abilities over and above what other people have. Very few people in this world try and try and try again. And failure seems to be, to me, more like a badge of honor because I'm more of afraid, I'm more afraid of the, the things that I don't try in life than the things that I tried and failed at. Because we don't truly know what we're made of until we are faced with adversity, until we are faced with failure. And it is how we act in those moments that define us as a human being. But on top of that, that's one aspect of why you'd want to start a side hustle. Another reason is because of the freedom, the flexibility that it gives you in your own schedule. You are your own boss. You are the difference between success and failure. But also, it opens up a whole new realm of finance over and above what the government is taxing you on when it comes to your paycheck. If done right, you pay less money in taxes owning your own business than you do as an employee. And to this day, I meet business owners that have been in business for themselves for 20, 30 years and they still have no concept of that fact of using legal tax loopholes to pay less in tax. Now, a lot of people say, okay, it's super simple for you to say, Ninja, you've done all these different things. Where do you start? So simple. You always start with something you love. And I've had small workshops where I've worked with people throughout the years where the, I, I ask them, what do you love? What are your interests? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? And it sounds funny. A lot of people will actually say, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Because what's happening is they're thinking in their mind that they're supposed to the answer of something that they enjoy or like that they can make money from. And the problem is you can't come up with an answer if you're thinking about two things at once. So I have them break it down. I said, look, let's, let's pretend, let's pretend you had a hundred bucks, 500 bucks, or even a thousand dollars in your pocket. What would you do with that money in the next week that would bring you pleasure? What would, would you know, get you excited, make you happy? And I get questions like, answers like, oh, I'd go snow skiing. Oh, I'd, I'd go camping. Oh, I'd go uh, do this to my car. I'd go fix up my car. I'm like, well, how would you fix your car? And they tell me how to. So if you had that money and it was, it was disposable, you didn't need it for bills, what would you do in the next week to make you happy? So then I get that answer from them. And I'm curious, uh, you know, there's 286 people on this call right now. Um, 
how can you answer that right now? I'd love to see your answers actually. And just, you know, a short answer. I would do this. What would you do if you had a thousand dollars that I just handed to you? And I said, in the next week, you have to use that money, not for bills. Let's pretend that your bills are all paid. What would you do with that thousand dollars to bring you happiness? If someone says they buy groceries, you know, I have an answer for that because that's a, I'm not going to say a defeatist answer, but that's an answer of someone's like, Hey, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. You know, someone that really needs to buy food or, you know, store up something. I've, I've met people that have started full businesses, teaching people using social media and making a lot of money doing it, how to save money at the grocery store, like how to coupon clip, how to do this. As a matter of fact, I had one of the ladies, I'm blanking on her channel name right now. Uh, she watches this channel regularly and she has a huge YouTube channel and she specializes in going and doing that, showing people how to save money. Um, so enjoys cars and understands how easy it is to, to flip a car. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars flipping vehicles. I, I love vehicles, trailers, tractors, things like that. Um, here, check this out. Someone said they would go out to eat good food. Think about a side hustle where you become a blogger and a vlogger and a critic. You know, it's funny. There's, we have all these people that run around that are, you know, these, we watch movies about them, how these chefs are so scared of what these, you know, critics are going to say, you know, the, the greatest critics now are the Yelpers and you could start a whole business around that. Um, so my point being is there's a lot of people that the people that would want to buy silver or precious metals, how much money you can make flipping gold and silver coins, especially numismatics online is insane to me. So my point being is that that first question you've got to answer. you got to go, if I was just given money, what would I do? Because then you go, well, I, I would get pleasure out of doing that. And so then what I say is the next thing is what we do is you build your side hustle because it's going to be something that's going to drive you because you enjoy it, right? And the, and the fact is every, anything today that brings you pleasure, too much of it will eventually stress you out or you'll get burnt out. And I want people to understand that. That's really important to get because it's very important to go and transition from business to business to business, especially when we talk about economic, currency, social, and war cycles. Because there's always other opportunities around the bend. And once you start small, and I always am, am, I say this is so important because the world is set up to hurt you. The world is set up to destroy you, to keep you in bondage when it comes to business. And I'll give you an example in a sec. Uh, it wants you to get into debt. If you can stay away from debt when it comes to starting a side hustle, you are going to be head and shoulders above any other business because you are not going to have the pressures and the mental blockage because of the pressure and the stress to pay those bills off to, f to think clearly. Let me give you an example. I went to my local county to start a business and get a business license. And I found out really quick that it is illegal to run a business out of my home. Now I could have a home office, but there's a law in the books that states that you cannot sell items out of your home. They've stopped this. And I, I asked the lady at the desk, I said, how am I supposed to start a business? She said, well, you have to have a physical address. You have to have a commercial property. I said, but I don't have the money to do that. She goes, well, you're going to have to go get a loan or you're going to have to figure something out. And I said, so the system is already against right when I start. Now, did I listen to that? Absolutely not. I'm an American. And, and th th these, some of these laws are just tyranny to me. And so that business was starting a palm tree business. And so what I did is I worked away around it where I said, I'm going to wholesale. And sure, I had a couple Craigslist days where I sold trees on Saturdays and people would drive by. And my neighbors uh, always loved it because they always had as much beer as their cooler could you know, have, or they'd always be invited over to barbecues and all of them were given free palm trees. So none of them said anything, but um, I, I sold them in batches. So I would store them at my home and then I would either deliver them or semi trucks would come every once in a while. And we would do a, you know, a big day of just loading up big trucks selling them in bulk. But know that, that the system is against you when you want to start a side hustle. And, and the sooner we get to a digital currency and cash is outlawed, it's going to be darn near impossible.
impossible to start a cash side hustle. I mean, it's going to be impossible to start cash. But with micro taxation and the way that they're setting up these IRS laws, you need to start now because the system is built in a way to where it doesn't want small entrepreneurs. It wants to benefit large conglomerates. And we don't have a lot of time to build up the mom and pop businesses in our country. Uh, I think people really need to, to grasp that and why now is the time. Um, and I see a comment about someone saying they believe the IRS is on their way out. You know, there's a lot of people that believe that. Um, and I understand why they believe that. But I always plan my life and my business practices, my business plans around the worst case scenario. And so with that, I have less to worry about. I sleep better at night because I have de-risked or I've practiced risk mitigation to properly vet an idea. Let me ask you this. If you guys don't mind, pop up some questions that you've been thinking of and I'm gonna be looking at this live stream and, uh, and, and answer some of your questions. Uh, let me give you also, as I'm waiting for the questions, my, I started with a candy business selling candy when I was in sixth grade, right? I'd make about $40 a day on a good day. That was a lot back in 1985, 1986. When I started my baseball card shop, that taught me a lot about being a rental. I was a sophomore in high school, had a baseball card shop. I loved collectibles. I've always sold collectibles, like selling collectibles. And, um, now you know, when I started my first big side hustle, it was selling electric trains. And I don't know if you know the story, but I ended up selling, I started with one $200 electric train set. And within a year I had $20,000 set aside. And my thing, let's see, somebody ask you this, let's just do this. I don't know what the ghetto vernacular is. My business side hustle, let's see here. I can't do that. Can't click it, we'll take care of that later. My, my deal, camera's all messed up. When I got to a certain point buying and selling real estate, and after I sold all my real estate in 06, I still owned real estate after that. I had rentals and, and, uh, and land. But I started getting into these smaller side hustles during the, the real estate crisis, the great financial crisis. What I did, thanks Neil, appreciate it. Hey, text me that, that name when you can. Um, I started looking at how easy it was to make between $50,000 and $100,000 a year. And once you get it, you start to figure out how to identify the right opportunity. And I tell people, if you don't sell fast and easy, write it down at the time of the garage sale and then turn around and start duplicating it. Go buy more of that stuff, have a garage sale. You can turn around and, and pick up $1,000 to two or $3,000 to start your side hustle like in a month, super easy. But you have to be motivated, right? Well, once you get down the plan of, we're gonna start small, we're gonna start with cash, we're gonna find out what sells easy, uh, what works as far as a business. And I'll give you an example of a coworker that I have. Um, there's this one gentleman that kept talking about starting a business. There's actually a few guys now starting side hustles at my fire department that I work at. One of them has become extremely successful to the point now where he's so busy, he can't take it to the next level. He's fighting himself. And I've told him, I said, it's now time to go from, you know, he's doing windows. He washes windows and does pressure washing. He's got it down. But what he doesn't realize, and he doesn't have enough confidence in himself yet, but he's, he's got it, because I, hear, I hear him talking about his processes and how he makes money, how he schedules appointments and all that stuff. He now has to take that to now where he's training and teaching other people how to have successful window washing businesses. And that'll 10X his revenue. But he's too afraid because he's like, well, who am I to teach anybody? And he's all, I've only been doing this for X amount of time. And I go, you're, you're the perfect person. Because what's happening is unlike businesses that are grossing millions of dollars a year and they are uh, out there, uh, you know, killing it cash wise, they've got, you know, 50 employees and they've got their own struggles. What you have is you haven't forgotten all of the pains of starting that business. So you'll be able to, for a very nominal fee, be able to teach other people that want to start their own window washing or pressure washing business, how to start right now. And for whatever they pay you, 500 or a thousand dollars, you're going to save them $10,000 in worries over their first year. 
Because, and he goes, no, I don't think I can. I, and I asked him how much he bought his equipment for. And I said, how would you do it differently? So, oh, I do it this way, this way, and this way. I'm like, would you save you money? He goes, oh, it saved me thousands. And I looked at him and grinned. He's like, all right, I see your point. You know, and people don't understand that. They don't think about that when they're in business for themselves, how to transition, how to set up a policies and procedure manual when, when a sales drop under a certain percentage. You know, that's why most businesses fail because they don't see, they have not forecasted the, um, the, the facts. They haven't forecasted what's coming in the future. Are their sales gonna get hit? Most businesses believe that whatever I'm selling today, I'm always gonna grow at that same clip that I was over the last couple of years. And that is just not the case. A lot of times it's hard for business owners to step back and breathe a little bit and get that 20,000 foot view of their business and the economy as a whole and really take in things that they need to learn about. So here's, here's a question Debbie's asking. Please, we need ideas for businesses for women to do. So first off, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, you can do the same things. I, I know it sounds crazy, but you can. Now, a lot of people would say, well, what about hard labor and construction? You know, one thing that I figured out a long time ago was the importance of being able to delegate, to delegate things. Uh, I have met contractors that have put hammers and nail bags on every day of the year for 20 years and they make X. And then I look at, and I hear about it from other contractors. I owned a construction company for a while. I, I used to put nail bags on and I only put them on three or four times when I owned a construction company. Why? Because they, because we had a project that had to get finished, but I was more valuable for the company's sake, hiring people, getting jobs and organizing. And I've seen contractors complain about a quote unquote briefcase contractor down the road that has no employees and yet he is employing them <laughs> and he's killing it. He's driving the fancy cars, he lives in the big mansion because he understands the power of organizing and delegating and that is something that women do very well. As a matter of fact, I will say this, because there's, there's things that just men do better than women and there's things that women do better than men and one of the things that women do better than men it's like training a woman to shoot a, a weapon they seem to do it a lot better because they listen so much better and they don't have that ego ego is what causes a poor trigger pull and it's not only with a weapon with a gun it's also with life and um, I also think another amazing thing that women do organization stuff is to be able to do consulting to be able to write to be able to give objective ideas. That's another thing. But again, it goes back to, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, you've got to find your interest. You know, I could turn around and say, you should start a window washing company, or you should start um, a, a telemarketing company, or network marketing, or any of that stuff. But if you don't enjoy it, you're gonna suck at it, right? You're totally gonna suck at it. I loved palm trees. I just loved the look of palm trees. I loved watching palm trees grow. I loved planting things and watching them grow. I loved selling trees. I also love driving tractors, so I love flipping them because I got a brand new tractor, you know, new to me, every week. And I was unloading all these cool attachments. I was always getting to run cool attachments. And, you know, for, for a few years there, I don't think the Ninja ever picked up something heavier than 20 pounds because I used the tractors. My back felt great. Um, I think that's an interesting thing. Um, so let's see, let me look for some questions here real quick, if you don't mind. So here, someone's talking about coaching. Uh, James said to Debbie, I can teach you about coaching if you'd like. Um, you know, that's a very important thing. Uh, you know, and like with today's day and age, I gotta keep grabbing. We didn't bring the suction cup for the camera, for the windshield, so I'm dealing with a little tripod that's always moving on me. Um, you know, with applications today like Teachable, and how easy it is to start a Facebook page and start talking about your passions if you wanted to get into coaching and what kind of coaching you want to do, whether it be life coaching. You know, there are so many people out there killing it in coaching and you may not think that you have the ability to coach, but sometimes people just need a an ear. They just need to, to have someone listen to their, their stuff. There's so many different things that we could do. It just blows me away. Um, 
Let's see here. Let me look. I'm looking for questions right here. Oh, here's a great one. Will an LLC shield you from the $600 tax rule, write downs, tax exemption status? And then asking about a good course on LLCs. So first off, I can't give you a good course on LLCs. I could give you a great book and it's called uh, Veil uh, to, oh gosh, now I'm blanking out. We'll start, start with this one. It's written by Garrett Sutton. It's called uh, Own Your Own Corporation. It's a great book. Then he has a new one called uh, Veil Not Fail. That's what it's called. So here's the deal with an LLC. That will not shield you from the $600 reporting wheel because when you start an LLC, you have to, you are a business. You're a bona fide business and you have to record your your uh, purchases. But again, now let's go back to that. You start a business that you enjoy, that you love. Why? Well, because when you have something that you like, you are able to write off some of your life. Let me give you an example. Um, farming. I had a palm tree farm. I love palm trees. I got to use the palm trees and plant them on my property as they were growing and I could sell them. I also set up and landscaped my backyard to give people ideas, not only what plants legitimately grow in our area, because they're proof they're in the ground, and I could give them ideas where my landscaping was intense. It was incredible. I had like 200 palm trees in my backyard of my track house, and I had tiki huts and, you know, concrete bars, all kinds of really cool stuff, uh, cabanas and palapas and all kinds of stuff. And then I was able to actually derive income from being able to get uh, referrals so that my friends in construction could go and build those things for them as well. But not only that, I got to write off my fuel. I got to write off a trailer that I used uh, for an office. Uh, it was a, a toy hauler. I got to use that. I got to use all kinds of things in my normal life that are making me money that I got to do anyway. And it brought in those, those tax benefits. And so every dollar that I saved to me was a dollar earned. It was a dollar in my pocket that I could not have obtained without a legal entity set up. And that's why you set up that LLC, but it's a little bit more than that. It's that protection layer between yourself, your social security number, your family, your personal home, and whatever you're doing with business. Because if heaven forbid something that you did wrong and someone was able to sue your company and get a judgment, they would only be able to grab what was inside of that business. And as you know, with an LLC, that's a flow through entity. So once that money exits, there's, and you have to always, you know, consult a lawyer, but that's why you want that next level. Uh, but it does so many more than so many more things than that. So many people run their side hustles, their businesses out of their personal name, out of their personal, like they run it, you know, out of their home and it's tied to them personally. And the IRS looks at everything. So when you want to write off your vehicle, you want to write off equipment, they're looking at everything, your entire life. And that's not what you want. You want to file a tax return for an entity in and of itself. The IRS looks at it and goes, yay or nay. Okay, we like it or we don't like it. Um, then you take that number, that that cash flow that you've obtained from that, that that profit and that flows through to your personal. Then you you file with the IRS your personal tax return and they look at that and it's yay or nay. It's two totally separate deals. You know, and I'm the type of person that sets up multiple businesses. So every business that has the right to have a vehicle that I need a vehicle for, they different businesses have different vehicles. And it's never the IRS going, wait a minute, you got one business with four vehicles. It's not like that when you file four tax returns and each car, each vehicle is used by that individual business a little bit. You know, after a while, what's happening is you're writing your entire life off. You know, um, my son is a pilot and uh, I've gotten to teach him and he's got his own plane, uh, how that works when we bought the plane, right? The company bought, one of the companies bought the plane. Right. And it was a hundred percent write off, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and so you've, you've grown up watching me with my side hustles. Do you have anything to add right now? I don't want to put you on the spot. I mean, yeah, it was, it was cool learning how, especially the consumables you use to the fuel and, and, and gear and all that sorts of things. If it's related to the business, you can be writing all that sort of stuff off. Um, and then you're growing within your own skill and, and your own revenue. So I, I'm able to, you know, write off making videos and things like that and all the consumables we use and associated with that cost too. Yep. And eventually we're going to have to get another plane because of distance and what you want to do with that. 
Right. Because you've been pretty busy. He's pretty active. Uh, what do you do? You teach, you have an after school program for kids? Yeah, we have a, uh, a middle school and high school club or uh, an aviation club and an air museum where kids get to come every other Saturday and they get to work on airplanes, give community service to the museum, go on field trips and learn all about aviation. Then I help with the Civil Air Patrol too, which is an awesome uh, aviation aerospace, um, United States Air Force Auxiliary, civilian auxiliary around the whole country. And then also uh, we do a lot of, I do a lot of stuff with the Young Eagles um, in our area as well. Yeah. Now this is a prime example of something. Now you don't derive any income from that; those two things, right? No, those are all nonprofits. But you are able to use your experience and time with those organizations to be able to make videos that hopefully will bring you in income because of what you do in the future with those videos, right? That footage. Right. And what's awesome is that you know, in my special case, I'm not necessarily I'm not turning a product out of it, or I'm not turning a service. Of, out of my community service because really all those organizations are me giving community service to them um, but I'm able to churn out you know even at the aviation club I'm learning how to work on airplanes you know at, at a different level than some of these kids but I've been learning how to work on airplanes from uh, from some of the guys who help out and I'm learning how to lead or, or do things with the Air Force or I'm learning how to uh, run ground operations at an airport for free like I've helped uh, run free flights for kids we'll, we'll have uh, we'll go out to the community and advertise that they can have free airplane rides so I'm, I'm getting to run those activities and learning how to do ground ops at an airport for uh, events like that event insurance and having to like organize a, an event with the city and all that sort of stuff so I'm able to take those skills and then in my case I'm using them to uh, to make videos about it and that's kind of how I'm turning that those experiences into a, a side hustle that way I suppose um, but I could tr I could take those skills in digital business too if, if I really wanted to exactly so now you I'm seeing comments about people talking about ceramics or getting into crafting or weaving things like that although this person says there's no future in businesses which that person will obviously be horrible in business because they've already yeah. shot themselves in the foot yeah. but um, that is a great example of, of when you can create something and then sell it but the other part that you're missing is the marketing aspect that's we're diving into yourself and learning about how to market something and what's crazy is nobody has an excuse now you could literally start a Facebook account make a short video and push it out there and just see where the universe takes your business. Yeah. Now there's a lot more to it than that. Just You don't post and just let it go. You learn about search engine optimization. You learn about paid ads and things like that. But we're at a moment where there is apps for everything. You could get on Etsy and sell a, a quilt that you made, a homemade quilt, because there are people out there that want to pay more for something that means something, something that was made with passion or love over something you could buy at Walmart, right? Right. Now, somebody says here, and this is a great question, a side hustle, the wife's not going to like that. So let's talk about that. Because yeah, the ninja, talk about yeah, that. the ninja's got a lot of uh, a lot of good info for that because uh, Mrs. Ninja has never really liked my side hustles, is no. the truth. But she gets to benefit from them. Uh -huh. So what do you want to talk about? Like, I mean, uh, oh, I remember uh, getting a call from my wife. This is a funny story. She's actually trying to call right now. This is before we started talking about her. So this is a great time. Um, we were, t uh, me and my son, my son was probably, oh, I don't know, a year old. And I was a half an hour away at a Circuit City. It was an older style uh, for you young chaps that probably don't remember what Circuit City is. Type one if you guys remember what Circuit City is. Um, I, it was a place you buy electronics. And I was always dreaming. And I was flipping electronics at that point. I would try and go get those basement bargain, you know, drop, you know, markdowns where I'd go and get like the 50 or 80% off section. And we'd turn around and resell them on eBay. And uh, and she was so upset because she's like, where are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm at Circuit City. She's like, that's like a half an hour away. Are you with AJ? And I'm like, yeah. He's in the car just, you know, talking to me or babbling like little one-year-olds do. And she never understood. She never understood that, you know, I used to like to flip my money and have my money make me money. And then I, when, when the money grew to a certain point, it wasn't, you know, stop doing the side house. I could only make so much in any side hustle. We're only human. We're human. We, we only have 24 hours in a day. You can only do so much yourself. Until you scale, you either hire people to do what you're doing or you automate better. You're only one person. So what I started doing is what I really dove into investing back around uh, 1998 to 2000. I really was taking my money and letting the stock market grow it. Uh, 
money market funds. There's all kinds of different ways I was growing my money. Uh, I got into oil buying uh, position in production, you know, oil wells that were going to be producing. We were, we were uh, investing in that. You know, prior, you know, we had to, you know, all put our money together and break ground and all that kind of stuff. My point being is this. I knew that there was only a, a way to make so much and I had to start getting my money to grow. But then I also found that shifting side hustles, it was about moving volumes of money. You, know, you can only do so many garage sales. You can only, you know, make so much money in garage sales unless you find some real smoking deal. Um, here, just curious, how many people in this uh, video right now have made good money flipping things in garage sales? Type two, if, if that's you, I'm curious. Um, and actually, type three, if you have a side hustle right now, I'm just curious with how many people are watching this. Because I want to go back through this and, and learn from you. Um, it's very hard to get a spouse on board with a business, a side business, a side hustle. Um, it's very difficult, mostly um, because the other person is usually insecure and they're viewing your ideas or goals or dreams based on what they think about themselves. And that is an incredibly difficult situation to be in. And I, I can tell you, it would be a totally different video about how you could fix that. Um, now, check this out. Somebody, uh, Diana says she'd like to bake and turn it into a side hustle. I have a friend who does, who, who likes to do that with pasta, trying to get her involved. Another with sourdough. You know, my, my wife has actually uh, designed and built a commercial kitchen. And here in California, we have tons of rules when it comes to uh, commercial kitchens. And it's just so much red tape. It almost seems like it's too difficult, especially to start with a small amount. But this is what I would suggest. Every state's different with its food regulations. And there are certain things that you can sell and certain things that you could bake and sell that float under a different type of regulation. And usually it comes with the amount of volume that you're selling or the way you're selling it. And you need to look into those because there are people, right now there's gypsy uh, restaurants popping up all over the country. I saw signs in a town the other day where someone opens up their home as a restaurant and they have signs leading to it. I absolutely love it. Now I know that the, uh, the FDA and all these other regulatory agencies would crap their pants, but I like it when you see the government crap their pants a little bit because it's important that people try things. And with baking, I can tell you that there are ways, there are loopholes. And let me give you an example of one fruit food item. Uh, I wanted to produce produce in a small scale, one acre farm and sell it. And I found there's all kinds of regulations against it. But one legal loophole that was put out there so that it allows people to, to be able to do something is start a, a fruit stand, a, food, uh, a vegetable stand. And that comes with its own set of regulations that are much more laxed. And starting a roadside fruit stand is much easier than farming and selling your produce to a grocery store. <coughs> it's weird how this stuff's set up, but you have to look into these different ideas, these different things. Um, Here's another one. Neil brought this up. Our, and can everyone thank Neil for being a moderator? Thank you so much, Neil, for helping us out. Start a seedling company. Sell small plants you grow. That is an example. You can start a 1,000 plant operation on a picnic table. A 4 by 8 sheet of, paper, uh, of plywood where you could start seedlings and then you can upplant them to one gallon pots and then the 1,000 plants would take up a of about 10 foot by 10 foot and then have a thousand trees or plants to uh, sell during the springtime and then list them on, on Craigslist and Facebook. You could even go one step further and go to a, a tree and, and learn how to take cuttings from a tree, small little branches and put them in the ground and they start to grow and sell trees. It is one of the easiest businesses to start. And I even showed someone the other day how to start one of those and how to uh, get his materials, go to a, a nursery because they pretty much throw away or give away the one gallon pots. And for an investment of about $250, you could turn that $250 into three to 5,000 bucks within 12 months. And that's something that doesn't take a whole lot of time either. There's always ways of making money. 
And I think it's really important for people to get that. AJ, do you got anything? You've been on so many of my side hustles. You've seen how they grow. Yeah, I mean, so the, the most prominent one was when I was a kid uh, was the palm tree farm. And uh, just seeing, like you were saying, there's only so much volume you can do by yourself. Yep. And so when you get to that limit, which I saw with you because you were running it out of the backyard of your uh, track, our track house. house. It was like well, a third acre property, right? Third yeah, acre. making about $50,000 a year. Right. And so I kind of saw you hit that limit because you had tractors to move them and you had a trailer to move everything. And so once you get to that limit, you're either forced with a decision now to, to scale up um, with either people or even bigger equipment or move on to a different property or uh, you know, close that one down and move on to another side hustle. And you saw the market turn in, in, into the favor of a different one and then you pretty the much tractors. closed that and you went into tractors instead because you were using the tractors to, to uh, increase the volume of the palm tree business but eventually that kind of capped out and then you're like, wait, I can actually capitalize on the tractor part of this instead and move I, volume. I went from making $50,000 a year selling palm trees and busting my back yeah. to making between five and twenty thousand dollars per tractor yeah that was amazing i went from fifty thousand dollars a year to i want to say my first year i made a hundred thousand my second year i made a quarter of a million dollars right it's almost like it's almost like the ratio between quantity and quality right it's like when you first start selling palm trees it's just pure quantity get 150 trees in your backyard for as cheap as you can and sell them for what you can um, but then the quality starts going up and the fact that, okay, now I can use a tractor to move these instead of my, you know, my back and I can use, you know, a trailer to transport these instead of just the back bed of my pickup truck. And then the quality went up to where it's now, oh, I can sell one tractor net 10 grand on one, tractor, whereas it would take me X amount of quantity of palm trees to do it. And so it's like the, the work load per dollar or the workload per unit starts getting less and less and less and then the volume gets more. You know, someone is asking a great question. It's it's not about a side hustle, but it should be. It says here, Ninja Crusher. I'm a single 55 year old female, debt free, and only ten thousand dollars in hand, with some gold and silver. Do I stand a chance to buy a home? You know, not only yes, but heck yes under the right circumstances. You know, right now you don't have to put more than one percent down to get a conforming loan. And when I bought my first home, I had gotten to the point where first off everyone told me I couldn't we our first couple of loan uh, mortgage brokers said that we did we couldn't make it we already had a, an offer on a house uh, accepted obviously I got that house within 35 40 days we closed on that house because I didn't listen to the first two people what I did is I bought it a certain way and within six months I bought my first rental and then it was game on because once you know how to do it once you can do it ten times and under the right circumstances you will absolutely be able to buy multiple homes because you're going to use the equity in the last home to buy the next one. And you're going to keep rolling that over. And a side hustle involving real estate is amazing. And you know, I could say this side hustle. I've been a full-time firefighter for 23 years. I've been in the fire service over 25 and I've always had all of these businesses. And like I said, going from, you know, I used to make what about eighty-five thousand as a fireman, and I, I would make like fifty thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in my side hustle. And I still never quit being a firefighter. I still am to this day, and it's very hard to stay at some times. But I do love what I do, and I think that's very important. Uh, to, to you only want that job for so long until these businesses start overwhelming you with success. Um, See, here's someone right here that says, Gilligan says they, they sell uh, garden seedlings and their neighbors love what they sell. You know, and it's really cool to be able to do business with your local community and keep that money in that community, keep the velocity of money moving. It's very important. You know, we've grown up in a day where we just rely on Walmart to have what we need or Amazon, and right now they do. There's a day that they won't. And the other thing too is what they are doing is they're choking out the mom and pop businesses around the country and we need to bring successful small businesses back to America that is the number one thing that I will say that I think that it's very important um, and here's the other thing too someone says here nurseries are being squeezed out um, 
by these bigger companies, I'm assuming they're saying, I never sold a palm tree that was the same price or more expensive than Home Depot. My goal was I didn't sell anything unless I could sell it for cheaper. And that was my goal. And I crushed it because people would come, and especially when I'd set up multiples, you know, when I'm like, hey, you know, this one tree is 10% less than Home Depot, but if you buy two, it's gonna be 25% less. And I sold on volume. And it was so much easier because I didn't want to deal with 100 customers to make X when I could deal with 10 customers to make X. Look, I want to thank you so much for sticking with me. We're getting pretty close. We're going to go see SEMA. And another side hustle idea that's popping up is a business is in the automotive industry that we've been thinking of. And uh, I'm excited to do it. And I want to, that's why I'm going to trade shows and getting more information. So I'm sure you're going to see us on site at SEMA in Las Vegas here the next day or two. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you to uh, Neil. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. The Economic Ninja, hold on, is out.